thinking winning, winning, winning. Um, if you fight, fight to be the best. Fight to win, don't fight to lose. He's got the height advantage, he's got the reach advantage, and on top of that, he's got a lot of talent. All eyes have been on Tommy Oosthuizen since his flamboyant entry into the ring five years ago. Reminiscent of the days of Harry Kutia and Charlie Veer, now world champion, Tommy has officially arrived, guns blazing. Pounding, sounding, foot in the door, collect 400 Gs for each metaphor, popping my collar, speaking in war, I stopped at the point of dime, jumping the car. Yeah, good looking guy, sells a lot of tickets, southpaw, blinding hand speed. He's got a strange personality, he's a show off. You know, he's a Burt Reynolds. You know, when he's on form, there's not many people who can touch him. No matter what you bring to him, he can handle it. He's one of those fighters who can just razzle and dazzle you with, you, with his speed, you know, it's electrifying. I'm not gonna lie, Tommy's an unpredictable fighter, he's a great fighter. And he's adapted to every kind of uh, fighting style, so I think he's prepared. I just wanted to throw bombs and, and put him to sleep. He is Tommy in the ring, you know, he'll show his opponent, come on, come on, bring it on. Uh, he'll float around the ring and, you know, it depends on the, the opponent, you know. Uh, and that is just Tommy's personality. And when we get in the ring, it's different. There's no better place. There's no better place in the world than, than to be there. You know, you can shut off from the world, even though the world is watching. You shut off from the world, and it's you and that guy. It's toe to toe. It's standing your ground, doing a thing. It's, there's just nothing better. And, I just wanted to, to knock his head off. Ladies and gentlemen, IBO champion, Tommy, Tommy Gunn, Chris Tyson, here with us. Tommy, you burst onto the scene in 2008 when you knocked out Johannes Swart and South Africa knew Tommy Westhazen arrived. The first pro fight, I, I can just remember, I was a little bit nervous, but aggressive, aggressive. <laughs> You've been undefeated in 24 fights. What was that road like to be so, become so successful? It's hard, it's, it's hard. Uh, boxing is, is the hardest sport in the world. It's, it's really training, making weight, um, you know, shutting yourself off, off from the world. Um, you know, getting your mentality ready for the fight, getting into the zone, preparing for the fights, uh, three, four months to, to prepare for a fight, uh, going, going abroad, defending your world title in America and, and coming back, it's, it's, it's hard, it's tough, but it's definitely uh, it's rewarding and there's no better feeling than winning a fight. In decision from Johannesburg, South Africa, Thomas Oosthuizen. The name Tommy Gunn, where did that come from? It comes from Harold Fulbright. When, when I came to Harold Fulbright at the age of 19, just after winning the SA, SA Championships, um, I got I, I won gold at the SA Games. When my dad brought me to Harold, we turned pro. Or I started training with him, and then just just before I turned pro, got my pro license before my first pro fight. We were sparring. Harold was standing next to the ring, and I was sparring with with the pros. And they asked me, yeah, the the one guy from the newspaper asked me what's my nickname, and Harold said, no, it's Tommy Gunn. And, and it just came from there. I asked Harold why. He says no, because my punches are like nine millimeter bullets, nine mil bullets. And then 
Yeah, from there it's just Tommy Gunn. Harold just said it there one day at the right time and I fell in love with it, yeah. That fight against Chilemba, take us through that. Well, there was a lot of hype. Um, it, was a, it was a local grudge match, uh, South Africa. He originally he hails from um, Malawi, mm. but, but he, um, he immigrated to South Africa. So it was, a, it was a fight where he had something that I want. I was supposed to fight Michael Bolling. Um, the eye injury happened, he stepped in, he won the title. Then after that, I was mandatory on the title. We faced each other in the grudge match. And I think I was just, I wanted to knock him out. I was aggressive. I trained very hard for that fight. I just wanted to throw bombs and, and put him to sleep. That's the, the hype and everything got caught up in the hype uh, for the fight, the, you know, the, the build up of the fight. And myself and him, we, we never liked each other then. And yeah, I just wanted to, to knock his head off. You wanted a rematch and they declined. You couldn't have been yeah, happy about that. I, I think um, he moved, well, he, he vacated the title after that mm. uh, because, because the, the man, I stayed mandatory challenger mm. because we drew. He stayed champion. I um, asked for a rematch. They, they offered the rematch and everything to him. He declined, vacated the title, moved up to light heavyweight. After that, I uh, fought Everett Bravo for the vacant super middleweight title and became champion. Winning, winning the world title, uh, it was the best, best feeling I, I can ever describe to you. It's a dream come true. Uh, people dream about it and, and I've achieved it. So it was unreal. Uh, I think I advanced more as a fighter after the Shilembe draw. Uh, I paced myself, I, 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 I hid my aggression, put my game plan together and went to boxing. You know went to boxing instead of fighting. Of course, Tommy um, has had all the opportunities. He's right at the top of his game. He's defended his title seven times, the IBO title, which is a, a record for South Africa. Uh, and in general, South African fighters, um, barring the great fighters like uh, Brian Mitchell or Vianney Bungu, have defended more than 13 times. And although it's a lesser title, the IBO title, when I say lesser title, not meaning uh, a bad title, it's the stepping stone. And that's what it is. Tommy's at the level where he would be fighting the greatest fighters of the era. And that's where we stand right now. Being undefeated hasn't been an easy road for Tommy. Earlier this year, he faced American Brandon Gonzalez, a fight which ended in a draw. A draw that didn't go down too well. That wasn't a title defense, it was a 10 round on HBO. Also, we had another 10-rounder with Marcus Johnson last year, uh, 2012, in Oklahoma. So, it would have been nine, nine defences now. You've made it quite clear, you hate draws. Why that? I don't sweat hours out in the gym to, to be second best. I fight to win, uh, I fight to, to be the best. That's, that's why we compete in the sport. Tommy, a sore loser. Uh, very sore. Don't give him a draw. I don't even mention losing. He doesn't like losing. It doesn't matter what other sport he does. If he does golf or uh, cricket or swimming or any other competition, he does not like to come second. Second is like coming last. Being a world champion and defending your title seven times doesn't just come easy. Tommy spends countless hours in the hammer gym with legendary boxer and trainer Harold Fulbrecht. Um, he's the best trainer in the country. He's, he's a southpaw, same way Tommy's a southpaw, meaning that his power is in his left hand. And um, Tommy is a clever fighter. He knows where he is during the rounds. And this is all because of a clever trainer. Uh, there's a saying that goes, the fight's won in the gym and, and uh, long before the fight. And, and that's the truth. We work up until one o'clock in the afternoons or so. Go home, have a rest, have a relaxer, 
And then at five o'clock at night, uh, sometimes I'll go running. Tommy moves in uh, in my house three, four weeks before a fight uh, uh, to try and keep his diet under control. Uh, does a lot of sparring because I believe in sparring because in boxing, in this game, you have to practice what you preach. All the guys I spar with are heavier, light heavies, cruisers and, and heavyweights. And you know, when big guys uh, throw punches at you, you're gonna, you're gonna move your head. So, so that's a good thing and that helps you focus. You talk about focus and how mentally strong you have to be. Before you go into that ring for a big fight, what's going through your mind? Here we go, you know, uh, in my mind, I, and, and I pray, I pray, uh, I say a prayer and just ask God for blessings. You have to sleep, eat, and, 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 and live for boxing, you know, otherwise you cannot make it in this, in this, uh, in this game. Described as a boxer puncher and stylish on his feet, Tommy is unbeaten in 24 matches and has 13 knockouts under his belt. His recent IBO super middleweight title fight against Argentine Ezekiel Moderna proved that this talented fighter is worth the diamond ring. Just a week ago, you beat Ezekiel Moderna. Congratulations on that win, Thank of course. You. Was that possibly one of the toughest fights in your career? Um, styles make fights. Uh, I think he had a, he had an awkward style. Not a tough fight. Not a tough fight. Had a bang of a shot on the nose. Um, I think in the fourth round, he caught me with a with a good shot. Just a lot of blood, and he never shook me. He never hurt me through the fight. But but he did cut me open very well and it was a clean punch. I give credit when credit is due. Uh, I was very concerned that the referee might call in the doctor and the doctor could stop the fight or the referee could stop the fight because of the bleeding and the cut but uh, they saw that I was controlling the cut uh, nicely and I had it under control. How important was this fight for Tommy against Moderna? I mean people said it would make or break his career. Yeah it was, it was uh, very imp uh, important for Tommy. Uh, you know, uh, Tommy had to look uh, exciting, he had to uh, uh, show his hand speed, he, showed, uh, he had to show his skills, uh, you know, he had to show his footwork, uh, everything had to fall into place for Tommy, you know, because, uh, you know, like uh, in the previous fight for, before Moderna, Tommy didn't perform like he should have performed, uh, and this time, uh, you know, like, uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, styles make fights and Moderna made it difficult for Tommy. It didn't make it easy for Tommy. But uh, uh, I still think Tommy did, had a good win. At the end of the night, uh, I still think that was the best fight of the night. Every time I push, he runs away and he wants my world title. So I, I, I don't understand. How do you fight for somebody's world title and you don't take it from them? When I chase him, he runs away. When I stand, when I want to stand toe to toe, and every time I waited for him, he never comes. You know, and also I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to hurt him as well. So it's it's boxing at the end of the day, and and he, his trainer and Manny just said to me at the press conference, they're gonna knock me out in three. So, okay. so I was waiting for that. He's a a good solid fighter, and he knows how to last the distance. But that's not what the fans want. The fans don't want him just to run through a fight and win a fight. They want to see a knockout, they want to see him going for broke. The nose looks very sore. <clears throat> um, how do you fight through the pain? Um, there is no pain. Funny enough, when only when there's pain is when I'm sitting in the corner and Harold's working on the nose. Because he just forces on everything. He uses force to, to stop the, the bleeding, so he, he pushes... Uh, you know, tissues and stuff and Vaseline and everything into the nose. But during, during the fight, the adrenaline and everything that's going on, the atmosphere, I just switch off from that and, and go forward. You know, if I bleed, I bleed. It, that's why it's boxing. How angry do you need to be in a fight? Not actually, you don't need to be angry. Um, you, you need to be effective and aggressive. Um, Pick your angles, uh, lure him out for something, put your combinations together. It's like playing chess. Uh, 
Fritzkog, that's what they call it in Afrikaans. Um, it's aggressive chess, you know, it's playing aggressive chess, putting him in angles and stuff like that. And then sooner or later, checkmate, hopefully. After intense sessions at the gym and a brutal fight like the one with Moderna, this is where Tommy takes time out to just relax. What do you do for fun? Fish, golf, a little bit of golf, not, not much. I uh, play a lot of uh, PlayStation, mm -hmm. Xbox, um, go out with friends to the movies, um, go out with friends to whatever restaurants or outgoing places they want to go, meet women <laughs> and so on. So on yes. And any special girl in your life? No, not. Unfortunately, my mom, my <laughs> mom, uh, she's the the fortunate woman in my life and, and my dad, uh, they they the people in my life, uh, no girlfriend, no no relationships. My dad always has a saying that uh, boxing and women don't go together. So for now I'm just boxing. <laughs> and you've already have such a fledging career. What has been the highlight so far? And becoming world champion, undefeated world champion, defending it seven times, but definitely getting the ring the fifth time that, that I've defended that. And then uh, perks, it's seeing the world, you know, seeing the world, uh, making money and doing what you love. Tell us something about you that nobody else knows, not even your best friend. Okay, that... Uh, I used to cry when my mom whipped us. Eh? <laughs> Most probably they don't know that. Yeah, my mom uh, used to whip us. <laughs> my dad was all, always the the soft one. He was he let us go, get away with murder and stuff. But my mom, she was a strict one, and yeah. Uh, I, I most probably got a whipping till the age of eighteen. But I, w I wasn't crying when I was eighteen. Were you that but, naughty? Yeah. I was uh, I was a rebel on school. Not a rebel, but I was I was a naughty guy. Um, you know, I was throwing stink bombs in classes, <laughs> getting into trouble at school, but also doing sports, playing rugby, um, playing chess. I played chess on school as well. Um, I got colours in in playing chess. Okay. Um, yeah, studies not so great. Never focus on that. I was more sports type mm -hmm. of guy, staying busy. Something like that. And uh, according to Harold, you're still a bit naughty. Is that true? I have to be. I have to be. If, if I'm not naughty, then I'm not myself. Um, if I am myself, then how can somebody, how can somebody predict what you're going to do if you don't even know what you're going to do? You obviously spend a lot of time with, with Tommy in the gym. What kind of person is he out of the ring? Well, he's, oh, he's, he's full of jokes. Eh? I'm not going to lie. I've never seen a guy that's more... More like a clown than Tommy. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a proper clown, but uh, very entertaining and, uh, and very how can I say? It's nice to be around a person that's so so happy about life. That's that's what you that's the kind of people you need to be around. So I, I would say he enjoys his life and. Tommy was born and bred in the East Rand and he's no stranger to boxing. His dad too was a professional boxer. An amazing stock of boxing. His father fought in the 80s and was a South African champion, international fighter. 
Your dad was obviously a, a professional boxer as well. Did you feel like you had to get into boxing because obviously he, he had such a great career as well? Well, in, in the beginning, uh, growing up, my dad had two rules. Mm -hmm. Monday and Thursday, you have to be at the boxing gym. Um, and then the second one is no excuses. You, you have to be at the boxing gym, me and, my, me and my brother. So every Monday and Thursday, we were at, at the boxing gym. Then as I grew up, uh, boxing became my choice. Um, it became something I wanted to do. I also played some rugby and, and you know, experimented with other sports. But at the end of the day, uh, boxing was just a calling. It was something that uh, I could do since I could remember. And how much of an influence has he had over the way you fight? Well, the, the style that I fight, um, the, the hardness, mm -hmm. um, showing like when you bleed, you move forward, and that comes from my dad. The man comes from my dad. The, the, the style and, and the way that I box, that comes from Harold Forbrack. So my dad, uh, my dad made the product and mm -hmm. Harold uses the product. So yeah, he, he sells the product. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Harold, tell you exactly what what you will do, what you'll do to win, and what you'll do if you that will make you lose. I understand Harold is is more of a parent, I would say at times, and it's 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 it's, it's, it's comforting to for us as fighters. Boxing was one of the biggest sports in South Africa and lots of people want to see it get back to those heydays. What is Boxing South Africa doing to help that process? You know, us and our promoters and also our boxers and also including the government, we are doing a lot to make sure that boxing gets back to what it was before. For instance, we just had uh, in the last few months, we had uh, the, national con the national convention that was... Uh, uh, started from the provinces. All provinces had their uh, provincial indabas, and then that culminated in the national convention. All of that was uh, trying to find an answer as to what do we do to take our boxing to the next level. It is not dead. It is just that it's not what it used to be in terms of its ratings, because we used to be in the top three, but now we are at the bottom level, towards 10. And all of that has been because the marketing really hasn't been that good, and, that's, and again, the, 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 the financial management has not been that good, which is the reason really a lot of people moved away and a lot of sponsors moved away. But uh, in terms of what's been happening in the ring, the boxers, in terms of what's been happening with the promoters, it has always been there. In fact, between the ring and the tournaments, we are having the best days of our lives. If you take the world, world boxing today, um I think the, the payout to Mayweather, now Mayweather is phenomenal, Mayweather is the best fighter on the planet, there's no two ways about that, and uh, to take home $85 million um, after a fight just tells you the magnitude of boxing, because uh, no other sport um, can you justify that kind of money, that, this money is in boxing. But the main thing now is that we do not have the funding, and as a result again, we do not have the kind of attention that we need. And at this point, we are uh, having the best attention that we have had in years from the government, especially from the Department of Sports. And we believe that with this kind of, of attention and with the passion that the people that be are putting towards boxing, we can only get better. Where do you see Tommy Wursthazen fitting in in all these legends of South African boxing? Fortunately for him, he's still a youngster. He's still growing. He's still on the learning curve. He's got the height, he's got the balance, he's got the, 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 the combination, he's got the talent that is needed. And again, what is good, he's got the promotion. Let's talk about you moving up to a higher weight. Are you keen about that? I am keen, I am keen to move to, to light heavyweights. Uh, I'm also keen to stay at super middleweights. I think uh, the, the weight is all on me. Uh, I know uh, different people have different opinions, but I am tall for a super middleweight and, and I'm a natural puncher. So moving up to, to light heavies, uh, I'll just carry the power and, and it will also, you know, I'll, I'll be bigger uh, as well. So. Uh, boxers uh, should be disciplined, uh, always be on time. 
uh, always be in a weight because in a world title fight, that's where Tommy made the mistake. In a world title fight, he's allowed at least two hours before the fight to go and check his weight on the official scale. So Tommy is to be blamed for that. Well, a lot of fighters are undisciplined, but a lot of fighters are talented. So if your talent is so extreme, you, are, you would be undisciplined. Uh, today at the Wayne, today we had uh, the likes of Rhino Liebenberg. Now you have Rhino Liebenberg, who Brian Mitchell mentioned in the press conference, was that uh, Rhino Liebenberg doesn't do everything excellent. He does everything well, but he does everything well. He trains hard, he works hard, he fights hard. So um, with Tommy, because of the talent, he doesn't have to extend it that much. You see, with, with Tommy, he just has to do enough to win. There's no stopping Tommy. He's already gearing up for his next fight in Canada next year, January. So I'll be working December training and everything. Um, yeah, just to be more active, uh, hopefully uh, get, get the super fights going. You know, being more active shows that my career is not standing still and waiting for anybody, that, that I'm going on with my career and racking up wins and, and uh, you know, going to the top. That, that's most important. That, that's a goal for me is just moving forward, staying busy and uh, the more fights I rack in, the more wins I'll, I'll rack in. In his next fight, he's got to prove it and show it to, to the public. I think it's just on him what he decides to do with himself. It is in his mind. If he really wants to do it, he can do it and he can go as far as he can because he's got it all. He's a good fighter. He's got to buckle down now and uh, he's got to fight the best because there's nobody left. Come out of high water if he wants the belt then, then he'll have to kill me when, when I hear the people screaming and, and I know that they're there to support me and you know, I can't let them down.